Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, folks. Welcome to Karate Without Belts. I'm John. And I'm Jeremy. And we're back uh, after what is in continuity only three weeks is, in fact, more like almost a month and a half. Something like Something. that. Yeah, we took some time off to do some, you know, go, go into the mountains and train. Jeremy was was sacrificing a goat to, you know, the gods of the Super Bowl, and thanks for the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they won. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad they won. Yes. But I'm, 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 I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm ready to move on to something else. Yes. But in continuity, we were, I think we released on the day that the Chiefs won. I think this is how much I'm not paying attention to this. We were ta- you were talking about like how are you all ready for it, and now, it, <laughs> and now almost three weeks later, just like nah, nah, well, we're good. I, I think they're still showing replays of the parade, and I'm like, you know what, that's it, enough, okay? The one part of the parade that I I do, the two parts of it that I find quite amusing was when Patrick Mahomes was throwing the football at some guy, and he was not paying attention. He takes off and full tilt down the street trying to catch this football and he didn't see the parking meter in, in plain sight in front of him and totally knocks himself out. I, I mean, kudos to that guy. I mean, that was awesome. And that and then, of course, in true Kansas City fashion, we had some somebody at the, at the speeches and stuff climb up in a tree to get a better view. And basically that person was a little bit uh, inebriated and he – as he was falling out of the tree, he deep pants himself. So it's all good, you know? So, hey. All good. It works out. That's I personally my... think you should uh, wait until summer to do that parade, be- not do it immediately after, because why in one of the coldest months of the year would you force a bunch of people to come outside to cel- to celebrate? I guess they still had like 1.2 million people down there, and I was like, yeah, I, no, I, I went to work. I'm like, forget that. No. <laughs> this sounds like a bad idea from a, from a weather perspective. Yeah, it, it almost became that, but that's okay. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. I remember when we did that for the when we did that for the Eagles in Philly. Uh, like it was one of the one of the coldest days of the year, and yet there was there's possibly a million people. I think it was more closer to the thousands, but and there was rumblings about who's going to the White House or whatever, and I was just like, just have another parade. Forget all of this. Just have another parade. It'd be good for the economy. Yeah, exactly. Can't go, back, can't go wrong with that. So, yeah. so besides uh, Super Bowl celebrations, Jeremy, what have you been up to? I've just kind of been working on a lot of odds and ends stuff lately, um, tying things back to notch you showed on. Uh, it was interesting. I, I started working with Joe again. I hadn't worked with Joe in quite some time and I was like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. And just kind of picked it up and started working on it. And was like, all right, that's kind of cool. And started applying that to AQ a little bit. And so so just kind of going back and forth between AQ and, and Joe and you know, seeing the similarities and seeing where I could cross reference different things and stuff like that with two weapons. So it's kind of interesting. We were working on some stuff uh, while we were uh, kind of on break, as it were. Unfortunately, due to the outbreak of the delicious, delicious, delicious coronavirus, the marathon I was preparing for got shut down. Everybody who's been listening and has heard me saying, yeah, I'm working on this for the marathon. Well, now it's canceled. So. But on that day, assuming that the doctors clear my knees and that uh, it is not a thunderstorm that day, I will still run that length on that day. There's me and a couple other people who are living where I'm at, and we're just like, no, we re- we train for a decent. Si- I trained for a decent six months for it, and but martial arts wise, yeah, I've been working mainly looking at weapons and stuff like that. February was supposed to be the time of just doing weapons every day. I tried to, but also had these like weird injuries and illnesses. So things have kind of been taking me off. I think I'm finally joining you in the knee category 
No, oh, don't don't do that. I don't I don't work with that. Oh, I'm not trying to, but I think I think finally my age age plus my activity of walking faster and or running is uh is finally catching up with my with my with what's ever left of my knees. Yep. What the doctors tell me tomorrow, we'll see what happens. So we we have been talking uh, recently. Some people uh, kind of it was a weird confluence of events. Uh, kind of different people talking to us about uh, different things they were wanting to do with martial arts and different things they wanted to do with uh, organizing events and organizing this and that. Some of which, you know, I'm going to participate in, some of which I will not participate in. Uh, some of which Jeremy just kind of outright said, nah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, you have the eloquence of the short letter. I have the unfortunate bear to be like, yeah, but I've got to explain it eloquently. And I've got to take three or four paragraphs to kind of go explain my point and present alternatives to what may potentially be a wonderful idea. I, I think that goes back to my whole last couple of weeks at work. It's been It's been very, very quick and very blunt conversations. Yes, no, okay, let's go, do it. I mean, that's, that's pretty much, that's, that's about half of the meetings I've been in over the last two weeks with different people. It's like, nope, yep, do it. So, Louder. so and you don't have time to explain, just do one, two, or three. So it doesn't matter to me. So, so. In, in, those kind of, in those kind of interactions we've been having, um, the concept or the idea of leaderships kind of tick both of our minds in, I think, different ways. And so today we're going to get into, I suppose you said it great before we got started, uh, the difference between management and leadership and kind of how you need need both, but they are two distinctly different things. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's definitely how, how you carry that out, how you carry each one out. I mean, management is kind of how I look at it is management is like a to-do list. Hey, boom, 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 boom. We got A to do, we got B to do, we got C to do. Right. right. And you're going to get it done with a certain amount of time. Leadership can be in that certain amount of time, but it's also allowing a lot more for, I guess, personal interaction or some type of personal enrichment towards towards one another in which basically the person you're teaching or coaching or managing i mean you're actually trying to build the best out of them as opposed to okay we've we've hit this checklist now let's move on and so it's a different mentality and i think the the, the management management aspect which you talked about uh, i think a lot there, you have a weird disconnect well especially when it comes to karate people not really understanding what that means because you can have management in terms of uh like in terms of a business right um it's a very business type word uh but it doesn't really need to be that um another word could or it could be organization um but it's like how you work how you manage not just people but how you are also managing that information that you're trying to to dis to disperse or how you're trying to manage, how to manage, you know, the, your affairs, as it were. But I mean, you know, to kind of take it further, I mean, it's managing how you either manage a class or how you lead a class. Right. Which is which is two different things. Right. It, it totally is. You get into, like I said, a role where it's like people are not comfortable. I, most of the times, I see people who are leading a class. A lot of times, they'll have kind of a kind of a set way of doing things or what they're wanting to accomplish, but they're willing to go off in on a tangent if they think that it's going to better the student. If you're just managing a class, it's more like, okay, we're going to do this. Okay, we've done this for five minutes. Okay, next. Okay, we've done that for ten minutes. Okay, next. You know, and it's just, I mean. One's yeah. pedagogy, one's orthopraxis, right? Um, right. Like, like we, to, 
to not bring in too advanced words. Uh, but uh, it's you know ones like you 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 kind of do you know we want to talk about a classroom situation. Uh, you want to just get the class done or get get basically walk through what you know, what everyone knows. That's kind of like uh, ship without a captain, but it's got but it's got a pre preset course. Right. You don't you, you don't need anybody to really fill in. Like you can have somebody step up to the head of the class, but everyone kind of walk through it without necessarily having a leader. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything new is accomplished. That doesn't even mean uh, that's a bad thing. Because to give them to take more from a runner's analogy, a runner's perspective, you have days where you run where it's the only thing you're trying to do is get the mileage and time in. Right. Same thing goes with with karate. Is you need to get the day in where you just go through everything the same way. I think also it it changes over skill level as well too. You know, if you've got a beginner starting, I mean, obviously. You're going to work on this, 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 and this. You know, there's different I mean, yes. concentration, very yeah. fundamental things. Yeah, you're going to build a foundation. You're going to you're going to lay the groundwork of what's to come. You know, once you hit more advanced advanced classes and stuff, it's like, okay, we're going to work on this now. How, how are you interpreting it? Do you see any? You know, and start letting them kind of see it for themselves to where it's like oh yeah i can do this and maybe i can change this up i can do this do that analyze it a little bit differently you know so i i think that's where it and it, it's kind of a tough place to balance as an instructor right because you want because as a you know as a as a teacher honestly which a teacher is not necessarily a leader a leader is not necessarily a teacher right. you know there is a distinction to be made there as well, but um, especially when it comes to just needing to get those things done, which you need to actually get done, you cannot run off on the tangent. Right. You need to make people sit down and get it done, which is not fun. No, no, it usually isn't, but I don't know. I, I guess I've kind of always taken the approach, you know, things will get done when you're ready to get them done. You know, especially in this. I mean, I, I think if you try to rush something, then you miss things. And I've, I've had cases where students have wanted to progress in certain certain areas without really getting a decent foundation on different things. And it, it, it's interesting because you can see where, where that actually hurt them, but a lot of times they won't. They won't see that. And right. as an well, not, until, not until a situation where they're with the, where they're going to get smacked for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, and you know, you tell them, "Hey, look, you know, your foundation isn't here. It's not that you know you need to go back and work. Oh, I don't want to work on that. I'm going to go go move on." And I think as, as you progress in your skill set, I think that also becomes a problem because a lot of times you'll want to do the advanced stuff and you kind of, you know, push back on the on the basics. Well, the basics is what really kind of got you there. So you really kind of need to develop those as well, too, but even more so than what you'd had. Yeah. So, so somebody who, so to manage that, to, to, to kind of tell, and this is where you kind of need the I don't want to say charisma, but you need that kind of leadership to feel. You need that kind of leadership leadership mentality to say, you know, look, you want this. How are you going to get there if you do not have the base skill? Which is that kind of mentorship point. Right. That, so I guess yeah, now we've developed a four-way distinction between teaching leadership management and uh, leadership. Well, I mean, if you look at it, leadership really is mentorship. It really is mentoring because if you really look at it, somehow, some way, there's something in in your approach, in something where people are going to follow that and they want to follow that and they want to be a part of it or somehow learn what you've got 
So therefore you become kind of a mentor, not so much just a teacher knocking stuff out, if that makes sense. Yeah, and then there's also, you know, the, the and then there's the, the caution of it, where, you know, what a mentor and a leader, you know, what determines a good mentor and what determines, you know, the, a bad mentor or a bad leader in that regard. Well, I, I, I think what really determines that is if you're looking at just curriculum or skills or knowledge and things like that. That goes into the managerial side of teaching. I'm teaching this because I need to get it done, period. Whereas when you look at a good mentor, good leader, they're looking at how am I going to progress this person way past where this person even thought they'd go? Or put them on the path from the very least. Right. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, you may not, you may not have all the answers for that person, but it's like, hey, look, you know, if you can get them going in that direction, yeah, maybe, maybe you're not the right instructor for them to take them to wherever their final journey takes them to, or whatever. But. Well, that's okay. And then I think that there's something to be said for the, I don't want to say limited time teacher or limited time mentor, but I think there is, there's, there's two dangers. Um, and there's, there's kind of the, 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 un, the, the very kind, but not progressive type of mentorship where, you know, someone will not be able to grow if they stay with you or not be able to to progress in a way that th that would be positive for them if they continue to do the same things over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, to, a, to a degree. Oh, yeah. Well, I, and I think that's where the, you know, your, your mentor, your, your leader has to really step back and say, hey, look, if I'm not the right person to take this person where they're wanting to go, I need to step out and get out of the way and get them to where they to where they can because right. a lot of, I, I think that's a that's another distinct point between you know managing something and leading something when you manage something you're assuming that you know all answers as opposed yeah. to a leader is like mm, you know maybe i do maybe i don't i know this maybe that's part of what you're looking for maybe it's not so right and well and there's also what is it Maybe a good adventure would be like where it's not necessarily the empty nest issue, but it's the over full nest issue where you've got that, that baby bird, not ain't no baby bird no more. He's way bigger and way stronger and way more able to take care of himself than you. This, this also comes down to self awareness where it's, you know, you have to be aware. A, a good leader is aware of when someone can actually do that. Um, and is aware if someone needs to be pushed out. Right. At least at least not not in a violent way, hopefully. I mean you know, and I mean I, I know I've run into situations where I, I mean I've I've sent students to someone else, but they had a complete personality conflict with that person. So it's like, okay, let, let me see if I can get that from that person and then go that route also you know i mean it's like that's the direction you want to go in okay maybe i can get you there maybe i can't i don't know um but i, I think also leadership definitely requires a lot of humility and humbleness in that in that respect i mean it's pretty much you got to be void of ego and from from what i've experienced not just martial arts but also in the business arena as well too. I mean, but people who've got usually big egos, well, a lot of times get get hammered. Sometimes they don't, but I mean, they may come across with a big ego in one aspect, but may end up having a very humble heart or have a lot of humility in another area. So yeah, and there's there's also the the risk of the boss, right, where everything goes upwards. Where it's like, what are we doing this? Why? Because the top guy told us to. That's why. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or one of my favorites is do as I say, don't do as I do. You know, and you're like, well, which is 
Yeah, that's that's the slipperiest of slopes. Oh yeah, that's that's about as slippery as it gets. But you know, it I mean you're just and you're waiting for that shoe to drop basically. So it's what's gonna happen. And so Well what's gonna happen when you when you especially in that regard where you tell people to do one thing but you're not actually doing it. You know, a good example is everyone, you know, do uh, a, a form a certain way or only train this certain way, but you don't follow, but you yourself can't follow that. There is no, there is no amount of charisma in the world to get an intelligent student to continue to follow you. Not, not usually. I have seen cases where it's like, and, and I, I, you know, I, I think I've even done this a couple of times, like, okay, do it like this at first. We're going to move forward and get you to this point. You know, I mean, if, if it's, if, if you're beginning and trying to get them to a certain point, that's one thing. But if it's like, okay, this is your final product and you're doing it something totally different than over here, unless you can really describe why it's different, and I, I've I've seen I've seen a couple cases where like somebody may have some I wouldn't say physical limitation, but or or something going on to where you got to change something up a little bit so that they could make something work. Right. So I mean, but that that's a little bit different. Right, and I think the the main the main issue there is you know what the per, the the person leading doesn't have a clear idea of what they want or they, they don't know or they don't know how to get that out of the, the people they're with. Right. So, and so that's it. But I mean, you know, depending upon how you go about it, do you become frustrated or do you become kind of humble? It's like, look, this is where I'm trying to get you to go. I don't know how we're going to get there yet, but we're working towards it. Like one of the things that you brought up with me it was late last year was there was something that I was showing people and I totally forgot why I'd done it a certain way. And then I remember it's like, Oh yeah, now I remember because it, it really wasn't a finished product. It was actually trying to get people to move in a certain way in a certain direction and then move over. But, I kind of somehow changed it or somehow it, it, it ended up not being correct, but it was, it was just kind of interesting. But, you know, once I remembered, it was like, oh yeah, that's why I did that. Okay. My bad. And that happens, you know? I mean, and, and how, how do you respond to something that, that you mess up? Are you afraid of of losing face? Yeah, and, exactly. And there's yeah. people who would who would who would see that as a challenge, challenge their leadership. You don't you don't challenge what I do and all this other stuff. And where, as a leader, as a teacher, as someone who who was in that community, uh, to not to not be approachable in that regard is 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 an ingredient is the, the prime ingredient for failure. Uh, it's the prime ingredient to, is to keep the wrong people around you while the right people around you slowly leave. Right. A good a good leader understands that. A good leader understands that if you help other people become better, even if they become better than you, then you've actually done the right done, done the right thing. Right. Absolutely. Where I think Absolutely. where that bad leadership comes into places where you're afraid of not being top dog. One of the best leaders I've ever worked for in, in a business setting, he said it really, really well. He said, you know, I'm surrounded by a ton of engineers who are a lot smarter than I am or ever will be. I have to make sure those people who are around me, I trust so that basically I let them do their job and I kind of get out of their way. I just kind of move them in a certain direction and, and point them in the direction that we're going. And being a leader in martial arts and instruction, that's a lot of what you're doing. You're trying to get yourself out of the way and you're trying to get them to actually see what their potential really is. This, this is where I think where you know, when you get the teacher who thinks they can do everything, 
Yeah. So they're martial arts teachers, and therefore they can do anything else. Like everything else is, you know, within their their realm of ability because they're a martial arts teacher. They're a black belt. They're, uh, you know, a blah 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 blah. They're, uh, they're, uh, you know, a ninth degree, you know, Kyoshi, uh, Mankyo Kaiden, Shihan, Soke, blah 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 blah. blah. Um, but they don't know how to put a website together. Yeah. They're uh, whatever, 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 but they don't know, they don't understand the, you know, if, if you want to teach martial arts, then uh, you're probably going to need some sort of liability insurance. More than likely, yes. So. <laughs> More than likely. If you want to teach kids, you cannot uh, create an environment where they will be traumatized, you know? like. Yeah. That's okay. Anyway, I won't say anything about that. That's I'll just leave that alone. Because <laughs> yes. we know plenty in the past, and I think something we may talk about next week, um, vis-a-vis a certain movie from the eighties. That that's how that's how martial arts schools have been somewhat run. And uh, uh, I've had I've had a kind of going on a weird aside as somebody who'd done martial arts with me for a while and their kids started doing martial arts and then this person just kept on bringing up all these super vague examples about why uh the person she was training with was good for the kids and why other people all they're doing is 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 ridiculing and they're not uh they're just creating people of violence and they're all they try to do is strip people away and break them down from what they really were and i'm like lady it's the late 2000 teens in america i don't think that's happening so at least not anymore no 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 i think in the time when she started and maybe towards the end of the time i was starting um that was happening but maybe at least in the states yeah yeah i mean and then, you know, you, you look at the teacher aspect and then, you know, you, you start looking at the organizational aspect of it. As in organizational, organization of the actual uh, class of, organization. The, uh, well, of the organization, organization. I mean, is, is, it, is it set up to where, okay, all we're doing is belt, 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 belt. And a lot of people get into that mindset. I want the belt. I want the belt. I want the belt. I want the belt. I want this. I want the one. I want the one. I want the one. I want the one. You know, as opposed to, okay, um, you know, this isn't going to be a money grab of belts. This isn't going to be this. It's not going to be that. But you know, hey, look, we're we're here to develop people and things like that, and it takes a little bit different toll. And I think you see that with instructors on the mat as well yeah and then and, and you, you'll get that in that clash of people who i don't think is necessarily a fault of their own but is rather the culture of or the, what has been managed around them is that if they've just only had that mentality of that that's the only thing they really know and it's the only thing they really value but you know a, a decent a decent mentor a decent teacher a decent leader um, a decent manager will kind of understand the more core value of, you know, the practice makes the person, you know, the, the, the culture creates the community. If you're not focusing on those things, then the kind of the, all the other stuff around it, the belts, the ranks, all that other nonsense it becomes superfluous, becomes, becomes other. Right. Um, and unfortunately, it's kind of flopped or kind of flip, 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 where it's more focused on that than creating that community or creating that, helping that person get to, you know, achieve their goals um, or helping or pointing them to being like, you know, the belt is your goal. They're all right. But, you know, if the skill is your goal, which I feel is a bit of a tr- bit of a trope, but um, it's, a, it's a, the, a trope that comes from somewhere. Right. Well, I, I think, I think also everybody's got to go through that as well. I mean, if, if you're an instructor, you're going through that process. It's like, yeah, okay, I see this, 
but I, I, I have to adjust here, 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 and here. Or you're going through the process, you don't adjust, and you're just like, okay, do, 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 do. It's just like another day. And I, I think in the long term, I think people get very frustrated with that mentality over time. Well, um, to be fair, mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a rut I think anyone can get into. Sure. Absolutely. And, uh, to be fair to that, but I think it also, you know, and this is hard because you never know when it actually happens, and especially if you you like if you you're in a rut, a lot of the times you don't understand you're in a rut. But that brings up another point: is that's where the leadership comes in to where you should see that, or at least experience it. Or may, it may not happen overnight, but eventually, you're like you know what, something's not. I gotta change something. Something's just not right. And the majority of the time, I have seen that happen majority of the time is when a school like in we're talking about like martial like karate schools is and this goes back to business too I, for a lot of people for me i don't really care but like for a lot of people it, it it's true in the successful schools and stuff this is what they do you know when you you have a lot of students and you have a lot of like retention of students and people are coming and you're building a good community and all that stuff you know, that's when your business is good. That's when business is booming. You're getting people in your, they're paying the rent. You can maybe do a little more. Uh, you're able to kind of create more. You're, you're able to generate more, right? But the less you're invested in that, the more that's going to start to slow down. The less people are going to come in. The less you have involved, you, you'll, the less involvement you have, the less kind of vision you have for it um, is where it falls off. And I've seen this. I've seen this happen a couple times. And oh, it, yes. is, it is so sad when you get a couple good people who are basically the leadership. And they maybe all also are the teachers, but they're not the owners. Mm -hmm. So they can't make the decisions. So they're put in this weird position of needing to toe a line. Well... And then at the same time, and at the same time, same time, be good teachers and be good leaders and be good mentors to students who don't don't have like don't. There's no one to really look towards. You know, I mean, that brings up another point that's kind of interesting, and that's you know, leading from from below, in which basically you know you, you've got somebody over you that yeah, they're 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 overall in charge, but sometimes you got to be able to take that initiative to basically say, hey, look, this is where we're going. Hey, we're going to do this. Now, it may be direct. It may be sometimes passive aggressive. It may, you know. So, I don't, I mean, you don't have to be passive aggressive. Yeah, I, I mean, or just being passive, you know. It's like, okay, we'll just try, you know, just nudge it along, nudge it along, you know, just baby along, you know. And, and sometimes that works, too. You know, it just depends on the environment. I, I've done different different methods, you know, leading from below several times, you know, whether it's martial arts or business. And it's like, okay, hey, what about this? What about this? And sometimes it even has to be like, you know, go to that person who's above you and say, hey, look, you know, hey, have we even just ask a question about it and ask that question in a certain way to where they come up with the idea. It's like, oh, yeah, this this would be a great idea. I'm glad I thought of it. You know, I was like, we should have students do do actual live drills so they can actually develop skills where they can actually defend themselves rather than just you know, practicing kata in a dance-like routine. Wow. I'm so glad yeah. I thought of that. Huh? Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's like, that's, that's called incepting? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you've been in any environment, you've seen that happen before. Like, yeah, I'm glad I thought of that. I'm glad you saw that. Now, the only thing is, is if you're if you're leading from below, you can't take it personal if they take if they take credit for it. It's like you're looking more for the overall direction, right? Because what are you looking out for? Are you can't like this is it is leadership is it's like being a parent to a degree. Like it's you know like it's not about you. 
it yeah. can't it can't be about it, I mean, and that's the thing it's like if you have a particular dream or vision it cannot include you in the end right and i mean it goes back to probably your listener are like holy cow i never thought i'd hear this but you know quoting or quoting or uh, paraphrasing something that Patton says, like, you know, General Patton, it was like, you know, if you really want to be a leader, give somebody something to do and get the heck away from it. And you will be amazed 90% of the time what comes about. Because they'll do more than what you thought they would ever do. Well, yeah, because that's giving that person the job, the job, like, because it ultimately also tests that person on their abilities. Right. right, and they're and they're taking ownership of it, not just you. So it's kind of which you can feel proud of that you actually, you know, gave to a to a degree. You're also giving like taking ownership of their ownership. Wow, we just have patent quoted on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I, you never know what you're going to get from. The so lucky me is to be like, yeah, but he was a war criminal. So like, that's what's coming. <laughs> well, it's hey. also. I, I like how he's parodied. I like how he's parodied. One day, I, I was in a part of a festival where he was kind of in a very funny way parodied. Oh, well, that's an off that's an off air conversation. Well, anyway, but I mean, you know, you know, most most people have something that's worth value that they've said, you know, over time, right. and you know. Whether you like him or not, hey, it makes sense. Right. You know, but. Fair, to, to, to paraphrase Musashi, a very, dim, or a, a, a very dumb person can be very right, and a very smart person can be very wrong. Yep. Well, I've, I've lived through that one, definitely. So. Yeah, well, both <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, that also goes, in, I guess that brings us to, like, a point where, like, how do you address a leader or a teacher when they are in that regard, where they're a very smart person, they're a very good leader, they're a very good teacher, they've been a mentor to you, but they're going down a path that's wrong, and that is, like, it's, it's like breaking the news to, like, some. It's trying to break the news to somebody who's like, we, we can't do that. Well, I, that, that gets down to personal relationship. Right. I, I, remember, I remember one time, it was at, um, when I was with, with Robbie, he, he was doing something that I thought was kind of odd. And I, I questioned him about it. And I, I thought I had, you know, at least a pretty decent relationship with him. And he basically said, you know, okay, point well taken. And, you know, and, and he basically said, look, I'm the one leading the school. I see this a little bit differently than you. If it's something that bothers you immensely, then there's a door. And, you know, I it, it wasn't something that, it wasn't something that was totally over the top where I was like, man, this just you know, overall just stupid or something like that. It was just like, I just don't think this is a good idea. You know, I'm not, that's kind of how I approached it. And I'm like, look, you know, I, I didn't mean to, I, I really wasn't trying to ruffle feathers, but it was like, okay, you know, all right. You know, okay, now I, no, I was wrong. Okay, that's fine. But, so, well, I, I mean, you have, to be, you have to be prepared to deal with that kind of fallout. Um, right. Because, I mean, that, that's ultimately the, you know, ultimately, in that moment, he should be proud as well. Like, of course, he was. He, he means to say something like that, but he shouldn't be proud because he's he's ready. You're you're kind of ready to step up to a degree. But, you know, when that happens, right? That's that's particular to the particular situation. But right. like, you know, if you feel like you can have that kind of confidence to at least say maybe this might not be a good idea, at least you are able to do that with confidence um, and not. Uh, you know, be like, yes, sir. Oh, God, we're gonna all gonna die. And I mean, I, I understood his point, you know, and I, I got it. And, you know, may, maybe I didn't see what he was seeing, but it, it was interesting. I mean, certain things transpired over the next four to six months that, you know, that I was, that I was bringing up and was concerned about at that point. And, and they did happen. So it's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I would say ultimately, you know, leadership is 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 looking towards the end, um, and it's kind of looking towards and beyond your own end. Uh, because right. ultimately, you're you're doing the hardest thing is trying to get a bunch of people to do exactly what you want, or trying to get people to do what you want them to do, and. I think what the hardest thing teachers, leaders, organizers, managers all across the world realized you cannot control people. Well, I mean, I mean, you you can definitely guide them in a certain way, but I, I think if you guide them in a certain way, they will they'll at least have that base knowledge, or that foundation that you give to them, one way or another, and they can build off of it or take it a whole new direct but if your direction is to be a leader then you got to be prepared for that and everything else in between yep so. So, i think that's that's it's a big thing people don't get ultimately is that uh it's a weird right now it's structured in a weird way where it's black belt black belt equals teacher teacher equals leader uh leader equals found knowledge and the more people realize that's not true uh, when yeah. more people take, kind of take that in more introspection, the, the more they actually try to grow, and the more they realize they don't know, I think the better leaders we're going to get in karate. I agree. I, I agree. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, not not everybody. I, I was reading something the other day where somebody was like, they were, they had like, you know, first degree black belt, third degree black belt, fourth degree black belt, and then six degree. I mean, it just. It, it was like good night. I mean, you could have filled up a whole page with all the different ranks that they had and all these different systems. And I'm like, one, what was the point? Two, how do you keep it straight? Three, what was the purpose of it? You know, I mean, that was the first thing I started thinking about. I'm like, what did you do to do that? What are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to be some? I mean. Are you trying to be all knowing of, of all of this or, you know, whatever? And I, I think to me, that's yeah, the ultimate right flag. But yeah, I mean, that is to me, too. It's like, I mean, to me, that's that's more of management mentality to me. Yeah. Whereas whereas leader perspective is more like, look, I know what I know. I can do what I can do. If I can't do it, I'm going to send you somewhere else. I'm going to send you over to this person and work on that. And you got to be fine with it. Yeah, and, and yeah. understand that you're not the font of all knowledge. But yeah. also realize that if you're not a good man, also if you're a leader, but you're also not a good manager, is, to find some, is ultimately to find to, if you're a good leader, you know, you'll at least understand, all right, I need people who can do this, this, and this. Right. And I think if you can put that team, at least assemble that kind of team, um, assemble the team, uh, that mm -hmm. at least you'll be you'll be able to create a decent community rather than right. just doing it solo. Right, and then yeah, I mean, I mean, we we've talked about organizations before, but <coughs> I think a lot of times people get into this. I I I don't know. I I just don't understand some of it to where it's like I I have to have this many people. I have to have this many black belts. I have to have this many people in my organization. I have to have so many people that represent this or that or the other thing. It's like we're gonna have a representative in every state and every town and every country in the world. I mean, why? Let's bring back our 1920s gangster karate uh, instructor from that okay. character. Granted, last episode. Yeah. No, I mean it's just why. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't get it. But I mean, you have who you have. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, I mean, like, now, yeah, and I, I think it's much better to be able to work with other people as opposed to just say, I I am the bearer of all knowledge, you know? It's... Well, and I, I think we're getting into a, to a, a era where people are being more collaborative, where people are... To are a point. To a to point. point. To a point. I, 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 think I would say to a point because I, I'm seeing this... I'm seeing this not just in karate, but I'm seeing this also in the MMA world as well, too. Right. I'm seeing where, well, we only do do this, and it's the only thing that really matters. Well, you know, I mean, if what are you wanting to do with it? I mean, if you're wanting to do jujitsu, then, you know, yeah, you can do just jujitsu, but do you want to take that into an MMA world where you're going to have to learn 
you know, whether it's Muay Thai, boxing, um, some some other skill sets other other than just karate. Your, yeah, karate, something. You, you're you're going to have to learn something just other than that. Not to say that karate's not good. Not not to say that jujitsu's not good. Not to say that any of them aren't good. It's just, I mean, if you're going to take it to that level, yeah, you, you can't just base it off that. How are you going to work that in? Are you going to work that in a confrontation style type of format, or are people going to, you know, be receptive to it? Yeah, and that, that makes a huge difference with your instructors. Well, and you can actually be collaborative with people more than you'll just get more. You'll just have more. You'll just be able to access more. Um, and some people can be a little more effable around others than you know than than not. But you know, ultimately, you've got to you've got to be willing to be able to to listen and you know possibly lead silently yeah absolutely wrong with a silent leader because exactly. at the very least like if you can if we're a quiet leader you know quietly leading is probably one of the best i've seen this happen I mean, not often but when it, i've seen it happen it's effective it's surprising and you know it's respectable yeah i mean you know and and what's interesting is you bring up a good point. Usually in that silent leader type of format, when they say something, people will actually pay attention to, and they're not really going to say a whole lot. Right. You know, um, not not that this is martial arts, but I remember I was working for an organization, and this, this is several years ago. We're in this healthcare organization. They have like a behavioral health clinic and a regular clinic and all this other stuff. And so... I, I was one of the upper senior managers in there. We're all in this meeting and they're starting to ask, why are we having all these violent altercations in the, in the behavioral health areas? You know, and I'm watching all these doctors just, hmm, hmm, hmm. you know, I mean, they're trying to think it out and they don't, they don't get it. And all I, you know, I'm the IT person. I'm just like, I got something to say about that. And they're like, what? Well, every time I go into these clinics, uh, what's on the TV screen is either Jerry Springer, Maury Povich, or some other goofy program. It's like, what? Are they not that, together? I'm like, isn't that just kind of feeding this attitude? And I didn't say anything else. Nothing else. And all of a sudden, the president of the organization is like, is that true? Are we actually doing that? Why are we doing that? We shouldn't be doing that. It's like, you know, and he got it. I got it. But the people who are running the behavioral health organization, what? Didn't get it. They're like, well, that's what they like. Well, yeah, that's why they're here to see you. They're not here to, you know, encourage this. But, you know, it, right. it's... I mean, I mean, that does go into a little bit of, like, do people you, is watching violent TV make you violent? No, I mean, probably not majority of people, but people who are in, in a health clinic to, you know, <laughs> to manage their violent behavior, probably having something that's violent on the television. Yeah, you, you don't want it to feed into it, you know, so it's kind of... No TV and no beer make home or something, something. Well, I mean, it, I mean, but that gets into the silent leadership, you know, it's like... Like I said, when the silent leader says one thing, doesn't have to be a whole lot. Boom. I mean, it, it's kind of like people usually stand up and listen. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, that's because I think there's there's strength in silence. Absolutely. There, there's, a, there's, you know, coming from the people who are podcasting who are saying this, right? Yeah. You, know, you, you try to wax poetic for an hour on, on a podcast, but being able to listen to an idea is one thing. But right, exactly being on the floor is kind of a different, different, different topic entirely. But, right. Absolutely. So. But I think that's a good place to leave it, um, at least for now, because I think this this topic does definitely cross over into a, a bunch of different things and uh, like a lot of our topics. But um, yes, absolutely. Well, Jeremy, what are you working on this week? I'm probably. I'm just going to really kind of play it by ear and just kind of see what really kind of kind of sticks out this week and just kind of see, hey, what 
what grabs my attention, kind of like the last couple of weeks, I said, Joe kind of grabbed my attention. I'm like, okay, we'll just kind of start working on that. And so, I mean, if I'm going to continue to work on Joe, cool. If I'm going to work on something else, cool. I'm, I'm just kind of, just going to be open to it. So, good. I think that's so. I think there's a there's 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 something good. There's something really good about having planned training, but also just kind of impromptu, being able to be impromptu with your training, or kind of like seeing where the wind takes you with it. Not all the time, but some. But you know, it it, it is interesting now that I think about it. A lot of times when I when I do that, I have a lot of growth in a lot of different areas. Whenever I do stuff like that, and just kind of like, okay, what, what's up? What 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 is it that I'm going to work on? And not not so much. Okay, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do this. Just going to do this. Like, well, just kind of let's just kind of see where it goes. And so it's know. the jazz versus the orchestra version of training. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna get my knees. What do you call it? Microwaved. Uh, X-ray. Oh, yeah. MRI or whatever, yeah. No, I guess. well, we don't have that that advanced technology around here. Um, but we, I'm just gonna have them look at my knees and just be like, "So, can I run?" And so, if they say yes, uh, probably not record next week. But if they say no, we probably will. No, I got you. I'm still. Uh, are we or if we maybe go and go on a different schedule or something like that? Um, oh, that's cool. Next week, I think we're gonna jump into something fun. I think a lot of people will uh, enjoy. Hopefully, and uh, may frustrate us entirely. But <laughs> uh, until then, uh, this is John signing off. Hey, and this is Jeremy. Have a good evening, good night, and good day, and everything else. So. Don't forget to keep training. <laughs>